Hi friends, today we have another issue dedicated to finds at all sorts of flea markets, including the internet one. Some of the devices from this video were bought a long time ago, but for some reason I forgot to show them. Of course, this isn't all that I have bought home lately. I devoted separate videos to some particularly interesting specimens. Let me remind you that all the necessary links, including links to videos with issues about the flea market, will be found in the description. It would seem, why does an electronics engineer need an iron? According to unconfirmed reports of an unknown organization, which most likely doesn't even exist, electronics engineer iron more than the average housewife only the first ones iron printed circuit boards. I think there is no need to explain how printed circuit boards are created by the most popular method. Iron, paper, printer, and you're done. Often I have used all the irons to create boards. They are heavy and preferably without holes for steam. Once on a local internet flea market, I came across an advertisement for the sale of an ancient but very nice travel iron. Look at it. It's like a cute creature that you definitely need to buy. Road Electric Iron was released back in 1964 by the Kharkiv Electromechanical Plant, Ukrainian SSR. The power of this baby is 130 watts and it weighs almost as an adult, 1 kilogram. It can be powered both from 220 volt mains and from a 127 volt one. And for this there is a switch in a not convenient place. The problem is that you can accidentally touch the switch with your hand during operation and burn the iron. The temperature isn't regulated and it is basically normal for an iron of this size. Preserved original box, instructions and stand the temperature to which this baby can heat up is 200 degrees Celsius. The handle is carbolite, everything else is metal, not designed for long-term use. It was bought to create small printed circuit boards and it copes with this task quite well, cost $12. Short commercial break. This issue is sponsored by the Chinese company GLCPCB, which is specializing in the production of high-quality printed circuit boards for your projects at the most affordable prices. The company's production capabilities are enough to fulfill the most complex orders, from simple, single-sided boards to complex, multi-layer boards. There is a large selection of solder masks and other options. The company is also involved in industrial 3D printing, SMD soldering stencils and board assembly. The quality of work performed at the highest level tested repeatedly. You will find a link to the GLC website in the description. I love old incandescent lamps. I can't say that I'm a collector, but if I come across a good samples for inexpensive, then I will definitely buy them. Of course, these voracious monsters have given way to LEDs these days, but in some cases they are irreplaceable. An incandescent lamp as a lighting device has low efficiency, but we must not forget that they can also be used as a heat source. Of course, you can't heat a room with a 100 watt lamp, but before industry produced truly monstrous lamps, Lamps of 500 watts and even kilowatts aren't rare and can be found at any flea market without any problems. But more powerful light bulbs are getting harder and harder to get. Bulb KGK220-2000. This is a 2 kW quartz halogen projector lamp that gives 58,000 lumens of light in a very compact size and is very, very bright. The disadvantages in addition to the miraculous heating include a relatively short service life of 170 hours. Such bulbs were used in all sorts of different spotlights. Today you can still find it on the internet flea markets, but not always and not for cheap. I paid about $15 for this copy. Now let's look how it shines.
Here is another beautiful item bought the other day, it has a very impressive size. This is a 3 kW projector lamp PG223000. It is powered by conventional 220 volt mains and consumes as much as 3 kW which is more than the average household blowing heater. Such a lamp, unlike the first option, isn't particularly rare and you can buy dollars for 10 to 15 on the internet flea markets. I gave about the same amount. They were used in ship, aviation, railway and other searchlights. Socket P40S. This monster shines like this. Well, the list of light bulbs ends by the most powerful sample, a projector quartz halogen incandescent bulb KGK225000 for 5000 watts. This is a lamp that cannot be simply taken and plugged into an outlet because the latter would simply melt. This monster eats as much as an ordinary iron, hair dryer, vacuum cleaner and a refrigerator combined. The design is the same as that of the first lamp. In line of these lamps, there are more powerful items up to 10 kW. I bought the lamp for 30 bucks, which is a lot. I really wanted to see what 5000 W can do, but I won't turn it on today. A separate video will be released on the topic of my light bulb collection. I'll tell and show everything in detail there. And yes, I forgot to say that the luminous flux of this lamp is 140,000 lumens. And this is almost 50% more than that of the most powerful mass-produced flashlight at the moment, Imolent MS18. This, by the way, is a free advertisement. If representatives of Imolent are watching, send me at least this flashlight for review. I really want it, but paying 600 bucks somehow shocking. The service life of a light bulb is longer than that of a small one, as much as 250 hours. The overall dimensions are now in front of you. A cool dinosaur. I can't wait to light it with the words let there be light. I bought this thing a long time ago and forgot to show it in the past issues about shopping at a flea market. It was later dismantled for the purpose of alteration, but some shots of the original appearance have been preserved. This is an ancient UZ1 charger with transformer. I will say that with this name, I didn't find similar chargers on the internet. The device is made very reliably. A case is thick, a transformer wound with copper, switches are reliable. On the front panel, there is a huge pointer indicator of current and voltage. The type of work is selected by an equally huge toggle switch. The device is capable of charging car batteries with a current of up to 10 amps. We have a charge current regulator, a main switch and below bayonets for output wires. As for the back, there are only a couple of fuses, a 2 amp mains fuse and a 10 amp output. Inside it is made according to the classics of the genre, a thyristor phase pulse adjustment method based on the ultra popular at the time thyristor KU202N controlled by a relaxed generator based on a KT117 single junction transistor. This charge doesn't have a protection against polarity reversal and short circuits. You know, such a grandfather times charger, if it closed, nothing happened, but if it closed a little longer, the fuse burned out. If you mixed up the polarity, the thyristor would burn out or maybe something else. In this case, owner repaired the charge intuitively or carried it to the neighbor TV master. Judging by the components soldered on the back of the board, this charger has been repaired more than once. There are 10 amp rectifier diodes on separate radiators and such cooling was generally enough. The current shunt of the emitter is located on a textile plate and fixed at the bottom of the case. The transformer is very reliable. Wound, as I said earlier, with copper wire. Apparently, its power is about 120 watt. They didn't spare metal then. Only the TV1-1 toggle switch contains 2.5 grams of silver in its composition. 
Initially, this charger was in a non-working state, and knowing this, I bought it purely for a work. Although, later only the case of this device was used in the new project, everything else was replaced. This project will hopefully be completed soon and submitted to your judgment. By the way, it costs not very cheap. I paid about 20 bucks and it was still in the summer of 2021 and the remake was delayed due to the ordinary laziness. Next device power single phase transformer OSU 0.63 purchased in the autumn of 2021 for experiments. This is a 630 volt ampere free cooled dry transformer that is powered by a conventional 220 volt single phase mains. The total voltage of the secondary winding is 42 volts, with a tap from 36 volts. The winding is very powerful. The wire diameter is 3.5 mm and the primary and secondary are wound with the copper. Such transformers are universal. They have been and are being used anywhere. They are very reliable and not noisy. The weight of this sample is 8.5 kg. From a pair of such transformers a welding machine can be made, even without rewinding. And with the rewinding of the secondary winding, you can make a transformer for a variety of purposes. For example, a charger and a starting device for a car, a powerful universal power supply. In general, the capability is limited only by your imagination. Price was $25. These seemingly transformers, most likely chokes from an old ferro-resonance stabilizers, I bought for the purpose of rewinding. I took it because they asked $8 for both and this is, in principle, a normal price. The winding is aluminium, the most valuable is iron core. The cores are toroidal, have a decent overall power. I have already turned one of the samples into a powerful transformer for the previously shown charger. Electronics MK41 scientific desktop calculator made in the USSR. It was purchased for 5 bucks as an addition to the interior of the workshop. The calculator is powered by 220 volts, the power supply is built in. It has a beautiful 14-bit electroluminescent display, which looks really cool, especially with the cover removed. The calculator is for engineering and can do a lot of things. You can read about the functionality on the internet. Despite the fact that such calculators have not been produced for a long time, it is not difficult to find them. Many of them have survived, probably for the reason that they are of no interest to refiners, because precious metals are practically absent in them. It is just a bubble these days because calculators are in every phone, but there are people for whom they are of interest. EMP200 is an electric hammer soldering iron or just a hatchet. Power is 200 Watt. Unlike the previous device, this sample is quite in demand today. Of course, there are a lot of new analogs, but they will either be of poor quality or very expensive, so such a hatchet is the best option if you need a powerful and durable soldering iron. It is in demand when you need to solder radiators, copper pipes, power cables, etc. 200 watts is an impressive power and very heat capacitive tip, which is a copper bar with a decent weight will hold heat for a long time after the soldering iron is disconnected from mains. Its quality is very high. I got it with its own case, which, by the way, is wooden. Only the fork is missing, but that's nothing. The soldering iron is fully operational, but needs maintenance. It has rusted notably. I have a powerful soldering iron. Also, I used to have such a hatchet but I lost it somewhere and therefore decided to purchase this one. Regarding the cost, I didn't pay money for it. I exchanged it for another instrument. But if you convert all this into money, then it'll cost you about $10. Well friends, this is the time to complete this video. Let me remind you that the links to past issues about the finds at the flea market and other useful information you will find in the description. There will also be links to my other resources, which you can subscribe to if you wish. Now, I say bye until we meet again. With you as always, was Kassian TV.